Okay, I think this is going to be part four. Filming this and doing this can make things complicated. We're getting down to where all we have left is the AC line coming in. I have a spare terminal on the far right, a hole. I put a ground. It will be an antenna ground. It will not be hooked to this cabinet in no way. It's a separate ground to ground my antennas, anything I hook up, so it's a convenient ground when I'm working on something. There will be a ground wire in the power supply because I didn't have one before. This will have a three wire cord. I'd like to find one of those pieces out of a computer power supply. It has like a filtering thing in it. Now I have one somewhere. It's a jack with a three prong gray cord on the old computers. There's a filter in there and things that help with electrical. I'm going to attempt to find that. If I can, I can always add it later. So we're down to the AC, the transformer. There's the switch. Excuse the sloppy looking purple glue in there, but it works. There's a mess of wires in there. I have my speaker knob in there. I have the binding post in there. There's the decibel meter. I have glue and electrical tape, everything around that switch. That switch up in there with the two black wires, that is your AC on off switch that goes right to the AC line and the transformer. So there's tape around there and glue. It's totally insulated, isolated. That's a danger item there. You don't want that touching anything. I did add a different speaker. It's kind of crappy how I bent the brackets around. I did to make it fit. This bracket up here is actually hot glued to the cabinet. It's not going anywhere. I use no hot glue and I use my little butane torch. That stuff's solid. You can wiggle that, it's not going to move. You can almost flex the metal on the top of the cabinet when you grab a hold of that bracket. Over time, the glue may deteriorate. So if you use hot glue for that stuff, just remember that. It may deteriorate and come loose. We got a wire that's masking tape down and run along the side. That is going to be my wire going from the external speaker out of a CB. That's what feeds up in there to feed this speaker and the meter and the knob. I use hot glue in several spots. Keep that wire laying there. This is my idea to isolate this. Let's take the light away. This piece of plexiglass. This is out of those Dremel kits. You get like a pinkish red case. It's flexible. If the plexiglass is not flexible, then you're you're not going to get it to bend. I won't by heating it. If it's flexible on your hands, there's two kinds of that. What I did was I scored it with a big utility knife, then cracked it off like you'd use a glass cutter. Did it real quick. It's not pretty looking. And I had stuck it in the vise, and I heated it with my butane torch, and used a turbo lighter, and then bent it over. This is a bolt that holds it down there. This is completely covered in glue. You would never want to be in here doing something and short back to the cabinet. I've got external on bolts on here because I have to add the fan. And then I will be adding in the future so I can hook a 12 volt car battery to the back of this power supply in case of a power failure. And what I'll do is I'll have a switch on this wire so the juice cannot backfeed in the power supply because it will. I've tested that before. I used a white piece of wire here. This is what I had. This is like a drop cord. I think it's 14 gauge. So it's plenty big enough. But I did put marker on it. Just like I used the green one for the ground, I did put some permanent marker on it. It's not the prettiest looking thing in here, but oh well. This back here is your voltage regulator final. This is what that BR on the board, that knob I put on the front, it's between the positive and ground terminals. You can see it in the other video. There's not a knob on it. It has a screwdriver slot. I may never put a knob on it. This is your axle Bowley's regulator where you adjust it. Okay. So that's what that pot's going to do that you spend on the board and I extend it, put the knob on it. Here's my little squealer in case you short circuit it. And that's what these are. You have a diode when it's on and short circuit protection and it'll light up. I'm going to try to 
that little red light above the meter. I'm going to try to find a diode. And I've done it before testing it. I'll jump it across real quick, make it squeal, and see if the diode will light up. I do have some. I don't know where the original ones are. They were put away. I didn't put them in the other cabinet. And the other one just shows the power on. I'm not going to worry about that. I have a real small bulb, and I put some blue uh, stuff over it. So even though it's white in the front, it glows kind of a bluish color. And that will dim down as you draw the power supply. I like having that little light in there. You'll show the light dimming down. To me, it's just as good as having an amp meter. I know I'm drawing it down. If that light starts going out, I'm overdoing the power supply. And the protection one's supposed to, I'm not sure if the protection one is supposed to light up, it's supposed to school if you're overdoing the power supply, so it's like a short. There will be a ground here. If I can't find one of those computer power supply cords in that jack, because there's like a filter on it, I will just use regular, I've got an old drop cord that's still good, three wired, there will be a ground here, because the power supply never had a ground. They shouldn't make that stuff like that. There's a lot of juice that this thing pulling in there all the time. They never put a ground on those power supplies. That's not safe when you're in the radio stuff and everything hooked up. I had to put my fan in here yet. So it's nice to have these bolts longer. Because I'm going to be adding my fan. The fan will be on a toggle switch so I can turn the fan off. I may put a adjustment control on the fan. I have a knob. It's like a rheostat. It's pretty big. This is does the same thing as a dimmer in a house for your ceiling light or in your car, older cars for your dash light. It's just wire wound. Imagine a little thing on your little race car track, how that little trigger went. It went against a piece of wire that was wound up, so it gives you more or less voltage. But this will work on a fan. It's tough enough, and it won't get hot. I've had it on a fan before, computer fan. The idea is to put the fan about in the middle. I'm going to modify the back cover because it doesn't cover the whole back. I'm going to drop it down. I'm going to leave a space in here so the fan can suck air. There's vents up inside of here and then along the bottom. So it'll be drawing air through the sides of the cabinet and pushing it out the back. This will get warm. You get carried away. I've got a 50 watt 2 meter ham radio. You put it on this 10 amp power supply, it will pull the power supply down. It shouldn't be on this power supply, but I may have to use the radio. I've used it before on it and never worried about it. But it will pull it down. I've actually heard the fan the fan speed go down. i got a fly in here, by the way. I'm ready to grab the fly swatter. You see me swatting around. Is that the prettiest thing in there? I'd rather have all that glue and tape so everything's covered up than having some problem and then have to rip apart. Because I had to hook all that up. I had to splice back in the wires after I got to building that front panel. I'd like to have some little connectors to use. I had to splice everything back together. I had to splice speaker wires other things together. Uh, this wire was there and the power wire was already there plenty long enough. But I took out the original speaker. It just didn't sound that great. It actually had a crack in it. That's an old 20 watt 8 ohm speaker. So you could really crank that up and just be used on radios, no, not on a stereo. I may hook a stereo or transistor radio into it, but things like this I marked. Positive and negative, which is common sense, you can tell it's red and black, but just for the fun of it. But this works really good. Little plastic bent in an angle. This is always isolated. So we're trying to keep everything safe. We said we're going to have a ground wire on this. We're not going to have no two wire plug into the wall. And this ground, like I said, will never be grounded to the cabinet. This is just a ground rod to my grounding rod. The power supply will be grounded to the house wiring. This is just going to be for my antenna rod where I ground my antennas. And like the back, show this real quick. This might be modified for 12 volt. In case I have a power outage, I'll have a toggle switch, I'll flip so it can't back feed through the power supply and I can hook 12 volts up to that, this little terminal block. Take all this junk off. But 
This is going to be set down further to the fan because it's set about up here like this. It's going to be down at the bottom so nothing gets in the bottom of it and the fan can still blow at the top. I'll probably cut some of it out. If I do, I will still save this tag. If I have to cut where this tag is, I'm going to take the tag off. I'll remount it somewhere else. But that's it for part four. I probably only have one more video about working, but I wanted to show the insides of this contraption I built. I don't know how long this one is, but I hope I've covered enough there to build something like this. Because these already had terminals coming off the board, these wires did. Because they used to hook up to the binding post in the old power supply. So I have plenty of Star Warsers. I have Star Warsers in between nuts. I've got double the Star, the well, they're internal tooth Warsers. I have like one on either side of the connector. So I don't have to super tighten everything. Those are just number six machine bolts, machine screws. When they get down nice small, they call them a screw, I guess. But, that's it for this part. Thanks for watching.